Okay, we're just after one o'clock. Thank you all for joining us for this RTIG webinar on passenger counting on buses. Um, this is being recorded and will be made available on um, our YouTube channel later. If you can keep your microphone muted during the webinar, please. And we're happy to take questions. If you, you can use the chat function for that, um, we can then um, pick them up and, uh, and answer them at the uh, appropriate time. This afternoon, we're going to um, hear from Transport for London, Journeyo, R2P, Ticketer, about their experiences and what they've been doing with passenger counting. Um, I am Tim Rivett. I am the general manager of Arctic. I know that there's quite a lot of uh, non-members that are joining us this afternoon, given the, uh, the interest in this topic at the moment. Um, so I thought I'd just introduce Arctic. Um, we're a trade or an industry body for public transport technology stakeholders. We've got a membership um, that comprises the whole um, industry sectors from operators to suppliers and consultants and local authorities. Uh, and we hold events like this normally in non-COVID times. These would be face-to-face -face day events with plenty of time for networking and things like that. We also produce uh, technical documentation and standards, as well as best practice guides um, and um, work at a European level to uh, help develop standards such as Siri and NetX for uh, our members. Um, more about uh, us and how you can join at the end. So first off, um, we thought that we'd hold this event because um, as public transport starts to build up um, and more people start to use it uh, as lockdowns end, uh, one of the key challenges that operators were uh, talking to me about was how do I know how many people are on bus? And if there's somebody waiting at a bus stop, how do they know how many people are on the bus to know whether it's going to be safe to get on or whether they're better off uh, making alternative arrangements. Uh, in, in the UK, uh, passenger counting on buses is not something that traditionally there's been um, uh, much investment and, and experience in. There is some in, in rail, but in the bus sector, it's, uh, it's been quite, um, uh, one of the areas that's that's missing in terms of technology and so uh, we thought that we'd start um, by looking at um, how you actually count people on bus um, and some of the suppliers in that market and what they can do um, and to to start today's session I um, thought it would be useful to hear from Transport for London and we've got uh, Twee Pham from uh, from the uh, from the surface team to talk to us about the work that they did um, on um, passenger counting and technology trials uh, a couple of years ago. So, Twee, over to you. Yeah. Um. Thanks. Thanks for the introduction, Tim. Um. So I work in the tech and data surface team in TRL, and I was um, involved in a proof concept trial in 2017, looking at how we can bring APC technology onto our bus fleet. Um, so just to give some context, Tim, can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, demand data is at the heart of TFL decision-making processes. Um, we need it for future planning, for business development, performance monitoring, um, and passenger information. So we're constantly trying to improve the quality of our um, demand data. We basically need to know how many passengers we have and how they're moving around our network. And we do this by using different methods, but automated uh, passenger counting is, is one of the predominant methods that we use. 
Um, we use it in trams, in DLR, in London Underground, and also in some interchange locations. Um, so that slide there just kind of depicts what our pan TFL vision would look like for APC. We like to be able to kind of collate all of the different um, modes of APC data into sort of one data central hub, integrate them, standardize them, and then making them available as open data to whoever needs it um, as API feeds. So that's kind of explain our future vision. Um, where we are with APC at the moment, we're slightly behind in terms of we don't have an automated passenger counting solution for buses. Um, we collect demand data on buses using traditional methods such as voice card, um, tap um, data, and manual survey, which um, is kind of done on a five yearly cycle. Both of those data sets have issues with them, um, they're not available in real time, and they average around 85% accuracy. So, what we're trying to achieve really with passenger counting is having a way to provide that demand data in real time and also at more than or at least 85 percent accuracy or more um could you go to the next slide please tim thank you um so we did some investigation work to kind of understand what transport authority were doing um, and some transport authority were already doing patent automated passenger counting um using kind of mainly infrared sensors which is a kind of traditional method. Um, but we want to kind of understand what other technologies were out there. So by conducting two market sounding questionnaires in 2017, we um, were able to assess that there were around six different types of technology um, types that we can group in, in, into groups. Um, and then we ran a second MSQ to then select one supply out of each of those categories to, to carry out a proof concept with them. We awarded contracts in December and started installation on 10 buses um, and carried out a three month trial um, between June and August 2018, where the, each of the 10 buses were um, sent out on kind of normal services and they were uh, able to kind of collect APC data, provide a daily report, and during the three month trial, we also asked each of those um, 10 buses to carry out 10 valid validation tests. So what the validation tests are is one round trip per bus um, and the count collated during that test would then be validated against manual count collected by our survey team. Um, the trial ended in August. We then collated all of the, the data um, and um, assessed them and it came out with some findings and also um, kind of recommendations for phase two. Another point to kind of just make here is that all of the data that we collected is depersonalized, so we're not using any personal information at all during our trial. Tim, can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. So the six different technologies that were on trial are thoughtful cameras. So this is traditional kind of additional cameras um, kind of installed on the bus, um, pointing out passengers' feet and counting the footsteps of people getting on and off the bus. We looked at CCTV, so this is kind of looking at um, leveraging our existing CCTV system using detection algorithm to detect passengers and um, count them that way. We also tested the traditional method of infrared sensors, um, so this is stereoscopic sensors over each of the door and counting passengers as they get on and off the bus. Um, the fourth technology was telematic. So we know this is kind of very similar to load weight, so we wanted to see how effective it was on buses as you know we can use it on other modes, as well as Wi-Fi recognition, which is currently being used very well in London Underground. We wanted to see how effective it would be in a bus environment. We then also wanted to understand whether we could kind of further utilize our existing ODX data um, and kind of model it use, using modeling um, methods to kind of group that with other big data sets so we can improve the quality of our current ODX data. So those are the six um, technology that were on trial for the three months. Could we go to the next slide, please? Thank you. 
Um, so this is a finding, apologies that the fonts are very, very small, um, but I'll be able to share the slide with you afterwards and also the report and you can read it in, in detail. But the kind of main finding from the, from the project was out of the six um, technology, four were recommended to take forward. Um, and those were thoughtful cameras, sensors, telematics and ODX analytics. So surprisingly, telematics came out as achieving the highest average rate of accuracy um, at 86%, closely followed by infrared sensors at 82, and then thoughtful cameras at 75. We weren't able to kind of assess the accuracy of ODX data. However, we understood that there were lots of potential there of reusing the existing data. Um, so we wanted to kind of improve on that and, and take that further. Um, Telematic also provided the most amount of data during the three months trial at 64% um, and then closely followed by thoughtful cameras at 63%. Um, we did uncover some issues during the trial which was kind of helped will help us kind of um, streamline and define our requirements further um, around kind of over counting um, how we would clear down at each of the end of every trip to kind of stop accumulated results. Um, looking at how we could align it with our bus stops, etc. So there was lots of lessons learned from the trial that we, we could feed into our final requirements for the ATC solution, whatever it is that we're, we're going to kind of procure for. Um, so Wi-Fi recognition, unfortunately, didn't do very well and was not recommended. Um, um, it appears that Wi-Fi recognition works very well in an enclosed environment, when, but when you install it on the bus, we found it very, very difficult, difficult to kind of um, control the, 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 the range of the recognition. So it was detecting passengers outside of the bus. Um, so for that reason, we, we didn't recommend it as a solution to kind of continue looking, kind of investigating further. CCTV was one that was surprisingly disappointing for the trial because we weren't able to connect the, the CCTV um, analytic software to the hardware. We spent most of the three months trial kind of working out how we would kind of connect the two. Um, and unfortunately, it wasn't recommended as suitable for London buses, but we do think there's further investigation that needs to be carried out for CCTV. So that's, that's the kind of summary of the, re the trial. But as I said before, there'll be more information in the um, uh, closure report that you can read on. Tim, the next slide, please. So the final recommendation for phase one is to kind of broaden the test cases for thoughtful cameras, sensors and telematics, and kind of understand further the, the cost of ownership for each of those solutions, and understand how they would test against the range of the different bus types we've got in the fleet, and also understand how we can integrate technologies with our back-end offices. Um, so that, that, that's the kind of, that's the three recommended solution. We also said that we should kind of revisit the CTCB um, analytics technology to see if we can improve and learn from this. And uh, we're not you know, kind of willing to that, let that go because we know that it works and it works in other kind of type of um, use cases. So we want to see if we can track this problem next time round. So those are recommendations phase one. And uh, next slide, please. please. So currently we're in phase two, which is kind of developing that integration. Um, we've been working with Trapeze, our iBus supplier, to de develop this ATC integration with our iBus units, that's already currently on our buses, um, kind of being able to allow us to plug and play any ATC solutions in the future um, using the IP4 PC standards. So the development has been completed and we're hoping to kind of test that um, in the next coming month, uh, whenever lockdowns lifted. So, um, additionally, we've been we've started kind of looking at server trials on the video analytics technology. We've consulted um, the market, and uh, we're hoping to run another proof concept with CCTV hardware suppliers and CCTV analytics suppliers, and kind of getting getting, getting them to collaborate and see if we can get them to kind of practice problem of integration, hardware integration. 
Um, so that's currently on hold at the moment due to COVID-19, but again, we're hoping to pick that up very soon as soon as kind of um, travel restrictions are lifted. Um, and lastly, we've been working on developing the APC data hub. So this is looking at the back end infrastructure where all of that different APC data from different modes be hosted and integrated and standardized. So that's currently in progress and we're kind of going out to the market, um, going through the procurement process to select a third um, party supplier to develop that for us and also developing the API feed as well. So um, that's quite exciting. So um, hoping that we'll be able to be in a position to kind of inform and have kind of a clear strategy of how we're going to roll out APC in the next year or so, next financial year or so. So that, that's it for me. I'm not sure if you've got any questions. Yeah, so if people want to um, pose questions to Twee, then uh, if you can uh, put them in the chat, then um, if you can type fast enough, we'll pick them up now. Um, so Twee, thank you for that. That was a uh, fascinating insight into the different technologies and the success that you were finding with some of them and some of the disappointments with others. Um, you referred to a report a couple of times um, is that going to be available at some point? So it is available. We're hoping to publish it soon via the TFL website. Unfortunately, um, that's not kind of high on priority at the moment. So I will be making it available um, for you, Tim, hopefully, and you'll be able to distribute it through, through the members or whoever would like to have a copy of the, the report. They can kind of hopefully get it through yourself. Or if you'd like to contact Passenger Accounting at TFL or myself, email address is on there. I'm happy to share that with you also, but we will be will we will be publishing that on our website fairly soon. Excellent. Thank you very much, Twee. No you. worries. Thank you. Um, so next up, um, we're going to hear from um, one of the suppliers that was actually involved in the pilot with uh, with TFL. Um, was called 21st Century at that point. Now called uh, Journeyo. Um, and uh, hear from uh, from Darren um, Mayer from there on uh, on what they've uh, been doing. So I'll just make you presenter. Should be visible now. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. So uh, thank you very much, Tim. Uh, thanks for the introduction as well. Um, so yeah, just we um, the op our operating companies are still still twenty first century. Uh, it's our um, PLC that's uh, changed to Journeyo for the time being. Um, and as Tim said, he's invited me along today to share a little bit about 21st century's experience of passenger counting uh, and how it could be applied to solve um, or to, to assist in solving uh, the current social distancing issues on public transport uh, and present uh, a long term solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out <coughs> by telling you a little bit about us and what we do. Uh, before moving on to a quick review of what we need to do to distribute occupancy information in a manner that will show passengers when the transport network has the capacity to allow people to travel safely. Uh, we'll then have a look at the technologies. As Tim said, we were involved in the uh, TFL trial, but we're going to focus on a, a, a slightly different technology today. Um, and then we're going to have a look at how to process any data into usable information and then how that can be uh, distributed to the audiences that need to see it. So a little about us to start with. Uh, we're an open technology provider where we work with market leading technology to build solutions to our customers specific needs. Uh, if we feel there's no suitable solution or technology, we will develop systems to fill in the gaps. Uh, our first major experience of APC came in 2012. Uh, when we installed 500 APC systems in a project for a customer in Sweden. And since then, we've worked with uh, many customers and many technologies uh, delivering passenger counting solutions, mainly throughout Europe, but also some solutions within the UK too, including some more bespoke solutions at airport sites such as Gatwick, uh, East Midlands, and Stansted. Alongside that, we have our pa the passenger system side of our business uh, that specializes in the distribution of transport information on displays throughout the transport network. So our, our experience of how to collect occupancy information, how to display transport information, we think um, gives us a, a good insight in, in ways to aid social distance management in public transport. So before we look at the technology uh, of how to count people and how to process and display it, 
the overall aim, as we see it, is to show occupancy levels to the three key audiences who need to see it most. And they are obviously the transport operators uh, who need to have an awareness of both the live occupancy levels of their vehicles and, his, and have uh, the availability of historical reporting. Uh, those who manage the networks to allow them to demonstrate the, uh, the current and historical capacity of that network. And of course, obviously, passengers, um, they need to be able to make informed decisions on when to travel via their apps, their journey planners and any on street signage uh, that's available. So to start with counting technology. Uh, we've had experience of most methods uh, whilst working with our customers and each has their own merits, as, as, as uh, Tui was pointing out. Um, and when considering which technology to deploy, however, you have to weigh a number of considerations. For example, uh, there is often a sliding scale between cost and ease of deployment and the accuracy and the long-term uh, implementation of the solution. So to take Toy's exa uh, Tui's example sorry, of, um, of MAC address harvesting, um, it's a lower cost solution than video or APC, APC uh, but it can't be accurately audited um, and it, it's not really fully inclusive. And you're relying on a passenger having a device that can be detected by the equipment and it's hard to uh, to guarantee that they have one or two possibly so we're moving to video or apc we're able to calculate occupancy without asking the passengers or drivers to change their behavior um, and although the video as uh, as, as Tui was pointing out is an emerging technology uh, it does warrant further research for, uh, sorry, for implementation, the, uh, the key driver for the decision should always be what level of accuracy do you, need to, uh, do you deem to be good enough uh, for your leads? So I'd like to focus on APC sensors, if I may. Um, I'm uh, going to focus on those purely because in our experience, they're a highly accurate uh, technology that's been widely deployed throughout Europe uh, and is the de facto standard, in fact, for um, passenger counting on buses in, in the EU. So we install these at the top of each door of the bus looking downwards uh, to detect people boarding and alighting. Virtual counting areas and lines help us to get accuracy, accuracy of up to 98% in some areas. Um, we often validate the results using the sensors inbuilt video storage uh, and remote connectivity through our journey or transit platform. The sensors count any object that passes uh, in and out of the counting line while the vehicle doors are open. They can be fitted to single or multi-door vehicles, and when combined with our Journey or Edge Gateway, the results can be transmitted in real time as well. The most recent sensors are even able to distinguish between adults, children, wheelchair users and pushchairs. In short, it's an established technology with a known cost, known installation and maintenance profile that can demonstrate a long-term and quantifiable benefit with, with use cases. So how do we then look to get the data off the vehicle? APC sensors will obviously give you the load data. But to be turned into usable informa information, we need to associate, it, associate that data with additional metrics, such as route, service, and trip. Again, there are a couple of ways to do this. And uh, Tree mentioned ITPT, which is our proposed methodology, uh, our preferred methodology as well. Uh, it allows us to subscribe to other onboard systems uh, to obtain the information required. Or in other words, um, we can take the information from a ticket machine or an onboard computer that knows the service and trip. We can monitor that data and transmit it alongside our counting results. Alternatively, this can be managed in the back office uh, once the load data has been obtained from the vehicle. There, we're matching vehicle and location against the timetable to discover the service. Whichever way we do it, it allows us to form data into structures that can be matched to other transport standards such as Siri. Once we have the data off the vehicle, uh, we then have to display that information to our target audience, as we mentioned earlier. Shortly before lockdown, we began to migrate customers over to the APC application on Journey Transit, as it offers multiple views on the same data dependent on user role. For operators, we provide a login to the back office. It allows users to overlay real-time occupancy data uh, over tracked vehicles and provides alerts based on configurable metrics. It also provides historical service utilization reporting, and we have uh, in the past built some bespoke reports for some of our customers also. We can, of course, provide third party outputs to allow operators to pass data to their own applications as well. For authorities, uh, the platform allows you to view the data on all connected devices operating in your authority area. Uh, so from operators from all vehicles, all, or sorry, all connected vehicles uh, and all connected operators, uh, it allows you to interrogate the network capacity and identify any potential network capacity issues. 
And once we have the data in the platform, we can then obviously distribute it to third party data consumers to match uh, existing transport data, as mentioned before, like Siri. So we can pass the data into our transport uh, specific content management system API, and we're able to uh, demonstrate safe capacity alongside uh, on our displays alongside real, uh, real time information deliveries. Um, enabling passengers to make an informed decision on which service to use. The data can also, also be passed to third party consumers, uh, such as app providers as well. So to return to the original requirement to demonstrate capacity on the transport network, the key for our solution is the accurate capturing of data, processing that data so that it can be easily consumed by third parties and allowing it to be effectively, effectively displayed, uh, giving operators uh, the insight to manage the safe occupancy levels of their vehicles, authorities the ability to effectively manage transport networks, and most importantly, enabling passengers to make informed decisions about the safety of public transport. Thank you for that, Darren. That was a uh, very uh, interesting uh, insight into uh, how you can uh, plug everything together to uh, to get information uh, out. Um, next up, we have um, Carl McFarlane from uh, R2P, um, who um, is going to um, explain um, the technologies that they've got. So I'm just making you the presenter, Carl. Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Carl McFarlane, Head of UK Sales for RTP UK Systems. I just wanted to um, introduce you to RTP. We've got a wealth of experience in delivering CCTV, real-time information and passenger information systems on buses, trains, and trams. And generally, as part of the overall solution, what we've experienced is that um, the APC on some pro has, has only happened on some projects. That's been in the UK, Germany, Sweden, and Norway. Today, uh, I'm very fortunate to have one of my colleagues in Girani uh, Vilberg um, in, in this presentation. Uh, and he heads our sales team in Scandinavia and was a former employee of one of our major customers in Tildebus that implemented our solution. So today, what this is, is just a high level introduction to the R2B APC solution. So I'm sure during these obvious uh, challenging times, bus operators have been working with local authorities and have created innovative and effective methods and processes to protect the drivers and passengers. So this is raised from drivers being um, given the suitable PPE and protective screens, advising bus capacity, capacity status on route through destination blinds, limiting access to certain parts of the bus, but also clear information banners showing rules for social distancing on board for buses. So to help regain further passenger inf uh, confidence, operators have been looking at different methods of further enhancing the technology that they have on the bus. And so this will help them to continue following government guidelines on social distancing, but to not exceed the maximum advisory capacity. One of these technologies is APC. So what features are included? And sorry, um, so what is it? How can it help operators during this crisis, but also continue to be a major benefit afterwards? The system is a dedicated combined stereographic camera and counting device with one sensor per door connected to the actual door trigger. This is then connected to the onboard integrated PC, and this will detect record and store passenger boarding and alighting data at each stop or station. This is used using the polygonal zonal functionality. By using the stereo double lens, it simulates human binocular vision and therefore captures 3D images to assist in improving counting data. As I mentioned at the start of this presentation, 
one of our key customers in operating APC is Tildebus. They have approximately 800 of their 2000 fleet installed using the iris and Hella camera and counting devices fitted above each door. The data is stored uh, once collated on the integrated onboard PC. And from there, the raw data is offloaded to an R2B backend database. Numerous reports can be generated and operators and local authorities have access to them and are able to further interrogate them, the data if necessary. Even with the many changes to bus schedules during this time, we already accept trans exchange updates to ensure the data provided is kept as accurate as possible. So now I'd like to talk to you about the actual system benefits. With the ability to hold data to the IPC for up to seven days, alternatively, operators also have the possible access to the live raw data in video or report format if necessary. The operators can configure the offload of data to suit the vehicle type, the route or the incident. An RTP have chosen to use cameras rather than infrared, which is an alternative method as we've come across already. To it, and this, we believe, improves the counting accuracy to over 96% accurate. We do realize the operators aren't going to invest in this technology only whilst COVID-19 is around. So what are the long-term benefits? Apologies, I've clicked one too far. What we what we're able to do is it what sorry, what operators are able to do is improve route planning and optimization by recognizing transport demand ASAP. It also by referring to historical counting data and comparing passenger movement operators can predict future trends and adapt accordingly. And by using the data further, this can assist in how operators fleet can be managed and typically leads to saving money. This is by reducing fuel usage, vehicle wear and tear, but ultimately improving passenger experience and experience by providing a better service, i.e. the ultimate goal is to get more bums on seats. The system calibration is by connecting to the actual IPC, the, cal the calibration itself can be conducted remotely. Setup includes taking into consideration door heights, any obstruction, any obstructions, exit and entry direction. And the setup procedure will have all the necessary details regards the actual door cell door types themselves. Once one door set is calibrated, this can then be copied for all of the same door types quickening up the process. The most important factor of this is the actual reports. And by using the live tracking data, operators will be able to monitor current passenger load and coach congestion. Our next generation target is for the live data to be available to the actual onboard displays to assist passengers coming on board to see seat availability. This will be ideal post-corona. To provide a further improvement to the passenger experience in real-time information, what we're working on now is providing a solution for this live stream to be available on smartphones in the, in the form of an app, a web link, or SMS. And this will be taken from the APC's last stop data offload. So it will be near to live accurate. The historical side is going to be the key part um, to any operator taking on board uh, this level of technology. And as mentioned, R2P appreciate the historical data will be the key benefit. This will allow them, this will allow operators to analyze and adapt vehicle usage, not only during COVID-19, but subsequently as well. The way our reporting tool can be adapted will provide a variety of report types, and this will be available to be analyzed and will be hopefully invaluable to assist all of our operators. So in summary, ultimately our system can be installed on bus, tram and train, and we have experience in all three uh, types of these vehicles. 
The operator ultimately will, do, will be wanting to save money and time, and this will be done ultimately by utilising the fleet to route requirement. One of our key uh, selling points is to have live and historical reportable reporting available to end users, offering 98% accuracy of the data using camera technology and the fact that the calibration can happen simply on a remote process. We all know that COVID-19 isn't going to go away anytime soon. So what we want to do is improve passenger confidence and safety as that needs to be the priority. So hopefully we can you can allow RTP in helping providing the best information possible. And that is my presentation. Are there any questions? The uh, the the people on this uh, session are, uh, are particularly quiet. Um, we've not had uh, any questions at the moment. Um, so um, thank you, Carl, um, for outlining you. your experience and and capabilities and. Um, and some of the the future direction and uh, an importance on the on the historical side of things. Um, we're now um, going to um, hear from um, David Bachelor at Ticketer, um, who um, has a um, slightly different um, take on the technology um for um counting um using their um ticket machines so david over to you okay thank you good afternoon um just to put the um situation in in context uh, we're working on passenger counting now we have 20,000 ETM spread across more than 550 operators in the UK. Um, the functionality is customizable by the operators, and it ranges from those who just define fare stages as names, and they're selecting tickets and fare stages manually by drivers. Others have got fare stages in that are geospatially plotted, and the ticket machine auto advances records the passengers against the fare stage name. Um, and finally, we've got the higher level of operator who are using NAPTAN stop definitions, mainly loaded from Trans Exchange, but also possibly loaded manually. The stops are allocated to each fare stage, which trigger auto staging, and that allows the boarding data to be easily reconciled to stop level. All the ticket machines are connected live via the mobile networks. So they're sending back data as the tickets are issued. And it is possible in the back office to be able to filter down on one journey and see how many passengers there are on that. Um, the driver gets an indication on his machine how many people are on there. Um, so I've gone to the first slide, Tim, because it just says what, um, how we're uploading this data. So we're working with DFT and we're going through targeted sign up of operators to provide AVL as Siri VM. Um, we've got 75% of our operators with Siri links uh, that we're already sending data to local authorities for RTI systems, uh, and then they allow it to go to other suppliers, websites, and apps. And the point about this is that we think at the moment this is the best way for sending the data back. Um, there are some questions that we've got later on about exactly what content you require, but that will pass it back. We've also got a link for operators who've got scheduled adherence which means they've loaded their timetables into our system so that they can upload their timetable data. And 
it's kept on the ticketer server for them. And every time they update what goes out to the machines, that will get updated into BODS. So hopefully we should be providing two elements of the data. And then we will be developing FAIRS data later um, when we've worked out exactly what we need to do for NetEx. So in the past, we've had requests um, from operators to show details to drivers of how many passengers they have on in comparison to capacity. But most of the time, it's been edge cases where we get school buses overloaded and it only happens at the start of term. And we've never had to put a lot of uh, effort into it. But we've always had it in the background. Um, the ATM knows how many passengers have boarded. It counts tickets. It counts ITSO acceptances, M ticket scans, e EMV taps, and QR scans. Unfortunately, the machine doesn't know how many people have alighted. And in the um, absence of automating mechanisms, it was originally considered too onerous for the driver to record alighting passengers. But with the changing circumstances and less people getting on and off, many of our customers have come to us and asked whether we can pass back the information and get the drivers to assist us. We could make some approximations for lighting based on fares paid and zonal entitlements, or even performing historical analysis of tickets and journey patterns. But fares unfortunately work to fare stages and not bus stop level, so total accuracy isn't possible. So we do need the driver to help us. Even where we've got tap on, tap off, um, which allows some counting of alighting passengers, we haven't got that exclusively at any company yet. We do have the possibility to interface the ticket machine with third party passenger counting systems. But at the moment, as we've seen, there are not many widely deployed in this country. Uh, An integration would have to be driven by operator demand. So in the circumstance with reduced numbers traveling, uh, the need for buses to operate in so safe, socially distanced ways and now allowing the drivers to record the numbers alighting at each stop. Normal operation, as I said, it would be quite onerous, but it does give us a better indication than the driver trying to use the internal mirrors. Uh, most of the drivers who've done the trial for us can see it's a good thing to get right at a critical time. So what we're trying to do is allow the driver to actually record the passengers when they get off and send that back to the portal. Where it's been deployed, the feedback from drivers and management has been quite positive, although I have to say locally that a lot of the drivers around here are hoping they'll be able to use it because they're just not getting the passengers at the moment to, to worry. Um, so within the um, ticket to portal, each operator is able to change the normal seating and wheelchair capacity of the vehicle to match their COVID assessment um, so that we've got some base figure that we, we can warn the driver when he's approaching. Um, they can also define threshold bands for three bands of occupancy, uh, and it's up to them what they um, call them, but generally it's green for no capacity problem, orange for getting full, and red for full. And they also determine the background colors to the vehicle in motion screen, which Tim has just put up there. Um, so they're separate screens uh, from the ticket machine. And it, as the driver drives between stops, the ticket machine comes up with this screen because it's a lot less bright than the, the normal ticketing screen. And he can drive along with that. And he's just got the basic information, the number of passengers he's got, and the color coded um, bars. Now, obviously, all operators have got their own um, ways that they're going to communicate with their drivers. And they've set their bands in a different way, depending on whether they want their drivers to 
uh, or when they want their drivers to start really um, paying attention to um, whether they should be letting more passengers on. Some of them are thinking about only changing to red when the bus is full. Others are changing to red to warn the driver that he's down to his last seat. Um, the driver has got on a normal ticket issuing screen, he would have a he would have a button at the bottom that allows him to issue a ticket. Um, and we have changed that so that when he arrives at the stop, that allows him to count the number of people alighting. But because that's difficult, um, we've developed these screens. The driver only sees one of these at a time, uh, but it's just, there, there's three there just to indicate the different the different colours. So you can see the, the driver gets options to alight a different number of people, one, two, three, four, or five. He can do it in groups. He can just add one each time if he wants to if he wants to rectify a mistake. He's got a button to reset to zero when he gets to the end of the trip if it's not a panhandle or a relief or something else that would complicate things and although we're not using it at the moment we've got the wheelchair button there and you can configure the capacity to have one or two wheelchairs and whether it's occupied or not um, that's a toggle so that will toggle off so that the driver can take it so the driver can see on the bus what his state of play is it's also sent back to the control room and from there the control staff can decide whether to um, deploy more resources or not. Um, the easiest way to pass it on to other um, or to pass the occupancy data on to other agencies is to include it in the Siri. Um, due to the speed of requirements due to COVID at the moment, um, we've had to use some extensions and apologies to all those people from Arctic over the years who I've been telling to stick to convention and stay along uh, the defined uh, standards. But we've um, put some more extensions on the VM messages for now. And obviously we're talking to um, downstream people and they have their own different requirements. And it's something we know that we need to discuss and we'll be discussing in Tim's document, which he'd started, the Arctic document referred to at the bottom. So we're quite happy to do that. Um, we're quite happy to share the extensions with other ETM suppliers. and. That's where we're at the moment. So what we're thinking is that whilst historically passenger counting was primarily for commercial reasons and generic passenger, and passenger information, the new normal dictates the need for actual numbers. And this is our best way of doing it. We're leaving the technical details to the operator, uh, the actual details of the capacity to the operators. We're not forcing that on them we're allowing them to, to choose it. And hopefully by presenting that data back, we'll allow um, downstream users and our um, operators looking at their portals uh, to help operate in a much better way. And I think that's it, Tim. Thank you, David. Uh, that was a uh, very helpful, um look at how an awful lot of operators in theory could very quickly uh, start to get some form of passenger counting um, and, uh, and passenger management going very quickly. Um, so I, I, quickly. I didn't say to you, sorry. Yeah, was, no. It has been released to one major operator already and others are doing the background work to allow it to be released in the next weeks. 
okay, that answers <laughs> the next question I was going to have. Okay, so thank you, David. Um, that was the last uh, of the presentations uh, we've got today. Um, there are some questions that have um, come in. Um, South Yorkshire was uh, were first off the mark. Um, Louise, who I've seen, actually had to uh, to duck out. Um, interested in costs of the system, so um, I'm support sure that um, Darren, Carl, and David will be uh, in touch with Louise to uh, to discuss that. Um, Stephen Turner from South Yorkshire was asking how is personal privacy protected using cameras. Um, do one of the um, suppliers want to um, pick up on that hi uh yes hi hayden tim starren here from 21st um so uh i think i replied on the chat but over well over 90 percent of, of buses in the uk uh have cctv on them already uh, and so operators tend to have an established process in place to um, protect privacy and make sure that the any footage that's downloaded only goes to uh those people who need to see it and isn't shared widely. Yeah, OK, thank you. Um, question for Carl. Um, when you've got a large fleet of vehicles that with different types, how do you manage the remote calibration? OK, I've answered that. Um, back to Simon. Basically, we calibrate when we're installing the solution and any updates or adjustments are done through the internet, normally uh, through 4G. And this connection is secured in VPN in a closed 4G environment. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, there's then, um, it, it's worth having a look at the chat for those of you that haven't been, uh, because there's a discussion on uh, sensor accuracy there. Um, a um a group question i think um what's the thoughts about um making um passenger loading openly available from commercial operators do we think that they're going to be doing that as open data the stuff ticketer are doing um would mean that uh, that would, in theory, be possible um, using Siri or and the extensions they're uh, they're using. Yeah. Well, what we found is that operators are trying to provide it at the moment to um, their own apps. So in a way, it's open, and obviously the DFT is encouraging openness, and it would depend on what what they wanted, whether it was available. Yeah. OK. Um, OK, that's the um, I think that's all the questions um, that have uh, come in. Um, if there are any that come on in uh, after this, then I'll pass them on to uh, the relevant people. Um, David kindly um, teed up um, this um, with all of the interest um, on um, vehicle occupancy. Um, there was a lot of questions going around about how you can um, use standards that people have uh, already got implemented to um, move that data around off bus and between systems. So um, we've put together a, a short guide to how to do that using Siri and GTFS RT. Um, it is fair to say the number of people have, uh, have raised, they're quite limited at the moment. Um, there is uh, work going on in the Siri working group um, to uh, enhance um, the capabilities um, so that you can uh, transfer um, accurate passenger counts 
for different coaches and seat types and things like that. Um, Siri being a send standard, though, um, means that however urgently um, there is a requirement um, to, 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 to change things, um, the wheels do turn um, slowly. So formal release will be the end of the year at the earliest, but um, the, the proposed um, changes are being made available on the, uh, on the Siri GitHub um, as they're developed. Um, and so if you are wanting to do some enhancements and extensions, you can look at that and have some certainty that you're not going to be doing something that's, uh, that's way off beam and going to cause um, problems later on. Um, OK, so um, today um, we've been hearing from um, the collection end largely of um, vehicle occupancy, how you count people on and off buses um, with a little bit of how you can present that to people. Um, but um, next week uh, on the 10th of June, um, we have another uh, session that's looking at how you actually present that data to passengers to help them um, make decisions um, and to um, change behaviours. Um, and uh, we've got passenger who are just um, in the process of rolling out some enhancements to their app that's used by a large number of um, operators in the UK. Um, swiftly from um, their US experiences and experiences uh, elsewhere in the world. Um, and then um, somebody, um, and uh, there's a number of people being slippery at the moment. I'm trying to pin them down um, for uh, examples for from Australia, Asia, and, uh, and in Europe, where um, there's, there's an awful lot of people doing a lot of different things with uh, with data and presenting it in different ways so if you're interested in the how you present it to passengers then uh, then sign up uh, for next Wednesday's session um, so um, I'd like to thank um, Twee, Darren, Carl and David again um, for the time and effort that they've put into presenting today and thank you all for um, joining us this afternoon. Um, if you um, want to find out more about RT um, and how to become a member and get involved in our activities, then feel free to, uh, to contact me um, or um, have a look at the website um, and, uh, and find out from there. So thank you. Um, again for joining us this afternoon um, and uh, maybe see you uh, next week. Thank you all. Thank you for watching this RTIG webinar. To find out more about RTIG and our work then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you.